Okay. Can you guys hear me now at least? Okay, great. All right, so um, while we watch a few more of the slideshow picks, um, I want to show you around uh, Zoom just a little bit in case you are new to Zoom. So in the bottom left corner, there is a mute microphone um, button. So as we open up sharing later, if you would like to share, you'd have to click on that to take that red line off of it and allow yourself to speak and us to hear. Uh, next to it, if you don't have your video on, you have a camera, that's where you start and stop your video. Um, there is a chat box too, if you wanted to just type in any kind of story or any notes. Um, fourth thing over is a chat. And you can type to everyone or you can type to a specific person are the options. And then there's a reaction over a couple screens. Um, buttons is reaction, so you can react to different things if you'd like to while you're on mute, while you're listening to other people's stories. And um, if you are sharing a picture or something from your computer, um, if you wanted to share that, the middle has a green share screen and you can share from there. All right, to get started, um, first I wanna thank you all, all for coming and joining us and celebrating dad's life. Um, next thing I have is, does it work? Yolanda, I clicked on the polls in the middle and the first question came up. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's running. Yeah, I don't have a choice to answer it now.
Okay, okay, so no. another one. I'm sure. Okay, so. Okay, sorry. Um, we've been practicing, believe it or not, all week. <laughs> and we have been... Um, trying out some of the pieces, but with just a, a few of us in audience. <laughs> um, so I think Yolanda wanted to leave the poll and do the answers later. And uh, Lori has some um, the opening um, hymn for us that is going to be um, played by um, Skip and maybe Charm together. I'm not sure the final decision on that. And, um, but hopefully we'll be sharing soon. Okay, we, are you hearing us? Yes. 
Okay, so you ready to start then? I think so. Okay, okay. So the first song that um, Bob requested uh, was, uh, it's called Christ Arose, and it uh, has to do with the resurrection. And again, uh, Bob's faith was strong in the Lord. And so we can rejoice that uh, he's not only uh, heard about it, but now he's experienced it. So uh, Christ Arose. Thank you, Sean and Skip. Can you guys hear me again now? Nah. Okay. How about ah. that? I'm nods, though. All right. So we'll open up some sharing time. If anybody would like to share, um, you can unmute yourself and um, share with all of us a story, a memory, um, a picture if you have it, whatever you'd like. No funny stories come on now. I know better than that. Um, all right, so let's see. Uh, I know Lori had something she was gonna share too, a funny story. Um, in the slideshow, you'll have to 
to try to watch it when it's going through again another time. Oh, there's a picture. So someone is sharing. Okay, great. Take it away. I think they're sharing the um, this the picture of the slideshow screen. Um, so hello, everybody. Thank you all for coming and taking some time out of your Friday night. Um, <clears throat> uh, so today would have been dad's 80th birthday and um, tomorrow would actually be um, my parents 50th wedding anniversary. So uh, we were thinking about how dad, you know, didn't want to spend that big one all by himself. And so that's, um, you know, why he kind of decided to go when he did so that they could do their big five zero up in heaven together. Um, so there'll probably be some square dancing tomorrow um, in heaven. And uh, um, I, I can't remember who I was talking with. I think one of the the nurses um, at the hospital, but reminiscing about how we used to always have to go to all the square dances. Um, I think Dryden had their community square dance the first Friday of every month. And then uh, Cortland or another county had theirs the first Saturday of every month. So that first weekend of the month, we were square dancing everywhere. And uh, my sisters and I would um, often be some of the few females that were there. So we'd have to dance with whatever male partner didn't have a partner. And so, um, and we'd take turns having to dance with dad. And uh, sometimes it was fun and sometimes it wasn't because he'd be swinging you around and your feet would be off the floor and you'd be, up and down and up and down like a roller coaster ride. And um, so it was, uh, yeah, I don't know if it was a draw straw kind of event, but uh, you know, sometimes my sisters would go um, somewhere and be gone. And so um, I would have to be a dance partner and maybe, I don't know, that's why I'm not a big fan of roller coasters. I don't know, but um <laughs> <laughs> lots of, lots of swinging, lots of circling. And, um, but, you know, still fun memories. Um, but um, another memory that I had was uh, another time my sisters, I don't know if it's because I'm the youngest, I'd get stuck with these things or not, but, you know, they knew better. And so they'd go hiding at the right times. So they, um, wouldn't have to help dad with all of the projects around the house. Sometimes they did, but um, often I was the one that was recruited to help with uh, whatever project dad was working on fixing. And um, I have told our employees now that with our home improvement company that you've never lived until you've held the nail for a blind man as he's swinging a hammer <laughs> because uh, it, it takes trust and love to whole new levels. Um, but all my fingers are still here and I still play piano. So um, he didn't miss very often. So that's a, a good thing. And um, um, there was one other thing I was going to share. Um, um, Dad had a funny side sometimes. And um, one of the last conversations I had with him, um, I would call him in between jobs. Um, I had a, a like a 20 minute drive in between. So I'd call him and see if he was on his exercise bike or see if he was being active that day. And um, I called and it was a beautiful day. And I said, dad, are you outside? He said, no. 
And I said, are you going to go outside and feel the sunshine on you? I said, it's a beautiful day here, nice and warm. And he said, oh, maybe. And I said, dad, you should go outside and feel the sun on your skin like a cat. And he goes, oh, is it going to make me meow like a cat? And he went, meow. And it was just the funniest thing. And so, you know, being a, a daycare teacher, I had to expand upon that and roll with it. So I said, all right, well, maybe next time the sun will uh, make you bark like a dog. And he goes, oh, no, not that. And I said, oh, or maybe next time you'll go out and it'll turn you into a cow and you'll start mooing. And he's like, oh, no, not that. And he goes, you're getting bigger every time. And I said, oh, but better watch out because maybe next time he'd turn you into a mouse and you'd go squeak. And anyway, it just, he was laughing, I was laughing, and it was just a hysterical conversation. And uh, so, you know, he had his moments where he was up and he had his moments where he's down and he had his mo moments where he was silly. I know um, one of Yvonne's favorite memories is, uh, is the impersona impersonations he used to do. He had a good Donald Duck, and he used to do uh, Bullwinkle, I think, from the uh, the cartoons. So he had he had his funny side, and uh, you know sometimes he um, would show it if he struck him. So anyway, just a, a funny story. My husband appreciated when I got home that night, and was nudging me to share that with you all now. So, all right, my turn's over. I pass the baton. I don't think anybody can see us. I don't know where we went. One of the things uh, I remember is that um, Bob would never um, introduce himself on the phone. I'd pick up the phone. It might be, you know, be some months since we last spoke, and and uh, he'd start talking and uh, so on. I'd have to say, "Who is this, please?" Or "Is this Bob?" It's like he always thought I was going to know who he was. He got that from Russell. Do you want to say anything? Well, he didn't like to make phone calls, so I'm. You must be very special that you're blessed to get a phone call. I always appreciated Bob around the church. He would spend hours and hours at the church. I mean, sometimes he was there all day, and you know, he'd start out mowing, and next thing you know, he was down cleaning out the ditches, and then he was trimming things, and. You know, it's just amazing how much he was willing to spend at the church, uh, putzing around, doing uh, all kinds of things. And it was really appreciated. And, you know, he just was always willing to help and always uh, cheerful about doing it. And, and I think it. Uh, your mom, I'm sure she had no idea half the time where he was at and what he was doing. But but uh, like I say, he always uh, even 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 as his eyesight got poorer and poorer, you know, he, he just kept wanting to keep doing it. And, it got to be a bit of a challenge towards the end. It was like, especially when he would ride his motor, his tractor down, <laughs> down along Slaterville Road. And it was like, oh my goodness. But he always managed to get there. And, and also uh, we just always appreciated his, his willingness to, to be involved and help out. And I know he really enjoyed the men's uh, uh, prayer breakfast once a month. And, you know, especially uh, in the beginning, he could help out and crack eggs and do this, that, and the other. Towards the end, it got kind of hard for him because he couldn't do those things. And I know it kind of, he missed that and, you know, but yet he always kept coming and we certainly appreciated that. And, and every Thursday morning was prayer time. And, you know, and again, he was uh, very, very active in all those kinds of things. And so, and of course the, the main thing he did was he was the, uh, the, the greeter at the door at the, into the, into the foyer. And he had a hug for everybody and was always interested. And, and so uh, everybody's going to miss that. So he was a he was, he was a special fellow. We really appreciated him, and and it was a joy to know him.
Okay. For me, Bob was just like when I when I was doing my Fulbright exchange at Cornell University and I had to stay with Bob. The problem was I, I don't know how my kids, one was eight, the other was four years, how they were gonna cope living in the house with Bob. But Bob just opened up his house to my family, my kids and my mom. And anything you do for him, it will go thank you. And when we serve him food, we, we try to say this is to your three o'clock, the other is to your six o'clock. And when we go back to Nigeria, we still do that. And my son will go, mom, look at somebody to your five o'clock. And that we can never forget Bob with that. It was always, after coming, anytime he comes back from church, he will always want to know how my service went. And he will be like, I was BG today. And I'll go, I was at church today. And we exchanged sermons, what it was he learned in church. And it was always fun to be with. It was always fun to be with. I, I want to share this picture that we took together. The last day I was leaving, he asked me, Elizabeth, would you mind me giving you a hug? And he prayed for me. That was something I could appreciate in him. Who asked me, I was your research at Cornell. He was always interested in what I was doing. And I remember so many times we had times together. Last year, Independence Day, we went together to Ithaca College. And it will show me the things he did. And he will say, no, this was done by my department. It was just so amazing. We went to the Tremont Park. I knew this might not be very convenient for him. But just to make my, fun, my children have fun, he will go out with us. And I will always, always, always remember that part of him. Bob was like my, the grandfather. That was what I, used, that was what I sent to Yvonne. It was the grandfather my kids never have. And I thank God for blessing our generation with with Bob. Thank you. I, I don't know if this picture is showing. I was going to share a picture, but maybe I will share that later. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. So Bob was our neighbor for, oh, 20 years or more. And uh, it was always such a privilege to have him there. Um, both he and Kay were, were just a joy and uh, it meant so much to us. And Mick is one of the two people that would help mow dad's lawn after he couldn't anymore. And we appreciate that too, Mick. I'm gonna launch another poll as people think about whether they have something to share. Uh, since we're talking about living nearby and neighbors, um, it's interesting because sometimes you see things differently. And um, we've been really humbled and blessed with stories that have come out um, in the last year or two even or in, in last few weeks. But one of the neighbors said 
the men used to gather to pray um, at Hillside and your dad would be on his knees as he prayed. He had a lasting influence on me, much as my father did. So very hard to say goodbye, I know. But I'm gratified to know your wonderful father is home now in his presence and reunited with your mom. Sending you three girls a big hug. Um, and as you process knowing Bob, maybe one of the most honorable men we've known is no longer here. Last time I saw Uncle Bob was at um, Sarah Sampson's retirement party. And Lori, you reminded me he was just dancing and dancing and dancing and having like just the bestest time. And it was just so wonderful to see him um, just living it up. It was really, really sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and so great to see. So um, following my sister's steps, the last time I saw Uncle Bob was at um, the memorial for Aunt Marie, which was very moving for all of us. Um, but to walk into the room and be able to sit down right next to him and just beginning to speak him know exactly who I was. At that point, he definitely wasn't seeing very well. And he just made me feel like I had seen him the day before, um, not many, many years in between. And he made me feel so loved and so welcome. It was such a wonderful feeling. Eileen, we, um, we've heard that about Uncle Ronnie as well, that when you call Uncle Ronnie and he hears your voice, he'll immediately know who you are and start talking to you. So, yeah, it's a part of God's gift that he give you so many senses. So when one is not so good, the others can team up. Mom, if you go to the bottom left corner, you can unmute yourself. You'll see a little red line through a microphone. Okay. There you go. We can hear you. I spent two weeks with Ronnie in the hospital, with Bob in the hospital when he had his first surgery. And we, I read to him a, a great story and to, talked to him planned a lot and I was just so proud of the man that he became and his life that he led and his wonderful, wonderful family that he had. And we'll all miss him very much. My memory goes 
back to when we were youth. And um, one morning here at the, the manor, um, Uncle Russell had gotten a contract to feed the, um, the army. They used to have convoys that used to go through the area. And um, he, Uncle Russell had gotten, had contracted to feed them breakfast when they were in the area. <clears throat> and they were about five miles up the road. So Bob and Stephen and I got up in the morning and mom and Uncle Russell were gone. So we were on our own for breakfast and uh, we had a snack bar there and we had an ice cream freezer that had several flavors of ice cream and toppings and whatever. And we felt that that would be an appropriate breakfast for us. So we scooped up, as you can imagine, kids scooping up all different kinds of ice cream and all different kinds of toppings and had our bowls all nice and full. And wouldn't you know it, Uncle Russell and Mom came came back early. <laughs> and we took those bowls and we ran the whole length of the the dance hall to get to the, the back part there by the lake. And we sat down and we were trying to eat it as fast as we could. And um, anyway, we got it down. And uh, when we went back to join them, mom felt bad for not being there to fix us breakfast and decided she would fix us a nice big breakfast. And it was very difficult for the three of us to choke it down. But uh, that was, I can still see us running, holding on to our ice cream bowls and running the whole length of that dance hall to, to get to the other side where they wouldn't see us. So that's, that's my memory of Bob, and along with a lot of other ones, is his dancing. Oops. Am I still there? <laughs> yeah, we can still hear you. Okay. Yes, I remember his dancing, too. He loved to dance and um, didn't miss many square dances and several polkas and um, really enjoyed it. We all enjoyed the dancing. Ice cream was a favorite, so you guys must have not eaten so much that it changed his view on ice cream. It, it still stayed as a favorite, so. It's a word of advice to you parents. Don't leave your kids alone for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> they won't make the best choices. Well, it turned into a Sunday night ice cream at our house pretty regularly. So <laughs> popcorn and ice cream Sunday nights. Well, the ice cream story I was thinking of was um, we'd take a lot of Sunday drives. That was mom's thing. And we do a lot of visiting family and stuff on Sundays. And you know, when it was nice out from spring to fall, you'd be driving along and randomly on the side of the highways, you'd have ice cream shops. And it was dad's thing to see them, scout them out ahead. And we'd be like, yes, yes, yes. Trying to like, see if he'd like decide he had to get some. Because if he decided he had to get some, that meant all of us got some. So we're like, oh, is he gonna, is he gonna, is he gonna remember? And most of the time we did stop and we all got ice cream, so. We started to tell him, Dad, the car needs to stop, right? And we'd wait and see the answer. <laughs> it was like, did we get thumbs up or thumbs down that time? But it was the car needs to stop. You were lucky you got your dad to stop. I can remember Stephen and I laugh about it, um, riding with dad and we would say, Oh, we're thirsty. Can't we stop and get something? He'd say, "We're almost home. You can have some. You can have a glass of water when you get home." <laughs> or his famous, "We'll see," which we never did see. But yeah, that was his, if we were so thirsty, we could have a glass of water when we got home. So you're lucky your dad stopped.
I think there was a few times we would we would keep going and because they would have been in conversation and he'd be like, oh, wait, did we miss it? <laughs> and then, you know, then there was the whole disappointment of, oh, no, we'll have to wait till the next time. But I think he knew where they all were, though, located wherever to whichever relative he knew where the ice cream was around that relative. Sounds like kind of an irony that the uh, Marion Big Top ended up being a purity ice cream place in later years. I remember uh, Bob and I, uh, it's a wonder we, either one of us could dance in our later years because we used to wade in that creek that was a little closer to Dryden than the Big Top. And the contest was <clears throat> kind of a side effect of our wading was see who picked up the most leeches on their legs. And uh, he was pretty good at that. And <laughs> I'd take them off as soon as I saw him. He'd end up with a bunch of them. He, he always seemed to win that contest. <laughs> I don't think he played fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing about uh, Bob was, you know, it seemed like it would be taking advantage of his problems to play ping pong with him. And I'll be darned, you know, you can judge depth, depth perception by relative motion, by relative size, and by binocular vision. And, of course, he had monocular vision, and he still beat me. So I'll always remember, you know, how careful you had to be around Bob when he was near the ping pong table. That was a little embarrassing to be beaten by a half-blind man. <laughs> and I loved it. <laughs> the leeches just makes me think of his competitive side and just like his high tolerance. Like you just, he could not be swayed sometimes. So, but um, with all the groundskeeping and work outdoors, he built up calluses like you would not believe. His It was like you shook hands with him and several calluses all at the same time, you know? So mom often would ask him to get something out of the oven and he never needed pot holders. He just reached into the oven, two hands, pulled out whatever it was, set it on the stove and didn't bat an eye at you. You know, we just kept looking at him and wondering how in the world. I don't think he could do it at the end because he didn't have the calluses anymore. But when he had those calluses, hands went in the oven, the whole pots came right out. Nothing, nothing doing. He was not to be dissuaded on things like that sometimes. Um, one of the things that I remember being touched by in the last couple of years, I uh, had him up here to visit and I was, we were getting in the car and going home. And I said to him, dad, you know, I know um, the getting up to go to work part was often the hard part. <laughs> and so, uh, but um, that some of the things, you know, just sticking it out and really, you know, making sure you uh, made it to retirement and took care of us and, he just kind of blinked and, and chuckled and said, well, that's what dads do, right? And I thought, all right, dad, thanks. Use <laughs> yourself, could get in the mirror and Daughter. Oh, here, here. I hi, I am Jeanette, Yvonne's daughter. Um and another one of um Bob's character traits um was he were was very like he had a lot of perseverance. And like once he wanted to do something, there was really no stopping him. Bye. 
um, along those lines, while we were um, uh, working on on the house a little bit and talking with one of um, Dad's neighbors, Art, he was telling us a story of um, when he would go over to Mom and Dad's house and he'd see Mom and she'd be upset um, about something and he'd hear um, tools going and mom, um, he would ask mom where, you know, dad was and, um, he would go in the shop and he'd open the door and all the lights would be off, but our neighbor could hear the, the bandsaw going and, um, he would stop and he'd collect himself and say, Bob, Art, I'm here. And uh, dad would turn off the saw or whatever. And, um, and Art would stand there and be like, you know, Bob, you uh, have me at a disadvantage because I need the lights in order to see and you don't. And dad would reach up and pull the light that was right above him, but obviously he hadn't needed, but um, you know, it, it made Art stop and gulp the many uh, times that he would go over and dad would just be cutting wood on the saw or doing whatever without, you know, any lights on. And it, uh, it was a, a miracle that God just kind of kept him going and kept him safe. And he still had all of his fingers too. So. <laughs> I think art was a, uh, an agent of the higher powers to keep him safe in some cases. Uh, one of the reasons he stopped mowing was because he rolled the mower over on top of himself a time or two. And did that stop him? He was still mowing after that. So uh, you talk about perseverance. Art was luckily in the area and helped him out when he rolled it on the, uh, on the side of the church lawn down into the ditch, almost into the road. So he had a lot of perseverance and uh, sometimes bordered on stubbornness, I think. But he usually ended up winning when he, he wanted to do something, he did it. More power to him, he set a great example for me. Hi, this is Maureen Mahoney, and I just wanted to say it is so nice to be with you all on Zoom um, and celebrate Uncle Bob's life, which was beautiful and and just celebratory. He himself seemed so celebratory in his dancing and in his daughters, your energy, the three of you. You're just amazing lights of this life. And that is obviously a reflection on him and your wonderful mother. And um, I'm sorry I didn't know him more, but it's just been such a pleasure to, you know, be connected with you through all of this. And I thank you so much for your, um, for your ability to reach out and be a, be this way in his life and celebrate his life that way congratulations girls and god bless you all yeah am i on now no is that your picture no yeah well It'll be green on your picture when you do it. 
Oh, am I on? Yeah, I guess you are. Yeah, we can hear you, Steve. Um, I, uh, I might have been there that day Bob tipped that more over because I remember him doing it. And uh, if I remember correctly, he was uh, mowing the upper part back of the church. He was doing probably 30, 35 miles an hour on that thing. And it seemed like I said, I told someone that uh, if he has to slow down, he's going to be cutting the whole neighborhood clear up to the, you know, Cornell. But uh, yeah, he was, uh, Lord was with him that day, I'll tell you. And um, I always liked it when I came in on Sunday morning, he was handing out the bulletins. So, but he was, he was good. He could tell where you were at and he'd handed them right to you. So <laughs> that, that uh, I sure miss, I sure miss that. So I'll go on there. I'm sure Bob's enjoying himself now. We'll have mm -hmm. some coffee and hot Hallelujah Square some morning. Hello. Hi. I think you're covering your mic. <laughs> Maybe it's just the, the laptop. Oh, you're muted now. <laughs> Can you lift up your laptop? I think your mic is covered. Is that better? Yeah, much better. Okay. There are a group of ladies uh, in attendance here today, but they're all quite shy. And uh, we used to go and visit Bob uh, to do crafts and knitting and that kind of thing. And uh, we used to have a good time. We would just blabber on about all kinds of things. And every once in a while, Bob would interject and say something kind of humorous about it. And we'd all be really surprised because we didn't even know if he was listening or not. And uh, it just was a pleasure to go visit and uh, just to carry on. Uh, we used to do the knitting group. Uh, when Kay was there, and uh, it was just a pleasure to be able to go and carry that on as though it was part of his life as well. And uh, I think he appreciated that. Yes, and we do too, that you ladies continued. Okay, can unmute now. <clears throat> Okay, so I think we're going to take a little break from sharing and we'll have another song and then uh, maybe another trivia question and then um, you guys can be thinking while this stuff is happening and uh, share some of that. Yeah, these are, these are songs that Bob had picked that he wanted done at his funeral and so these are songs that meant something to Bob and this next one is by Charles Wesley and so it was written uh, hundreds of years ago and basically it's talking about the salvation process but as I was singing the words and thinking about it this afternoon, you know, you can almost see that this is also our graduation to heaven and thinking about uh, the new experience that we have and, and being set free and, 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 and uh, now being with the Lord forever. And so we rejoice in eternal life and we rejoice in the fact that Bob's with the Lord and he's with his family and friends. And, and again, someday we'll be with him together. So again, it's all because of God's amazing love, not because we deserve salvation, but again, because he uh, chose us and he loved us. And, and I know uh, uh, Christ was really important in Bob's life. And so we praise him for that. So the name of the song is And Can It Be. Thank you. 
interesting. I know Bob was the first one to acknowledge he was not perfect and that he, I'm sure, had many issues and many things, but I just couldn't help but think that third verse there where it says, uh, my chains fell off, my heart was free, I rose, went forth, and followed thee. And that's, I'm sure, what happened on the day that Bob died. The Lord set him free from many things that he struggled with. And, and uh, you know, and I'm sure, uh, again, it says here that uh, he claims his crown. And the Bible says that God uh, says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And I'm sure that uh, Bob heard those words when he uh, went into the presence of the Lord as uh, God honored him for who he was and, and the fact that uh, he did his best and, and, and with God's grace and God's strength and God's help. So well done, Bob. Uh, we appreciate you. And uh, we are thankful for who you were and what you continue, what you did. Here's the next poll for you guys.
So that's part of how people thought on the trivia question. Again, we'll show the uh, true answers at the end. Anyone else would like to share? Yeah. Okay. Hi. <laughs> um, I wrote something down because I'm not very good at saying things just off the cuff. And some of it uh, Louise covered. Thank you, Louise. <laughs> because she knew I might not be able to talk. But um, I, have, I have many happy memories of spending time with Bob and Kay. They were a warm and friendly couple that you could just be yourself with. Um, a few years ago, Kay invited a few friends over to spend time together and work on craft projects. She believed working with your hands and being creative was good for you. Bob also liked working with his hands. And if he wasn't in the room with us, listening to Family Life Network on the radio, he was outside or in his workshop tinkering with something or, or another. He also joined in the conversation, especially when there weren't very many ladies present. Several times I was the only one there with Kay and Bob and we would have a good time reminiscing about people and places we knew from our times in Dryden. Um, Bob and I both lived in Dryden, Dryden when we were younger. We didn't know each other then, but we had some mutual acquaintances. When Kay passed, Bob said the ladies were still welcome to continue the craft group at his house. It was a lovely gesture on his part and we were happy to be able to get together still. It was fairly quiet during our visits. It's hard to get a word in edgewise with a group of ladies talking and talking and talking. <laughs> but he would chat with us for a while and sometimes he would fall asleep with our voices droning in the background. He would sit in the chair Kay used to sit in and wrap himself in the blanket she knit for him. It was a comfort to us to be in the room together with him with reminders of Kay. Hopefully it was a comfort to him as well to have us there. I'll miss him and miss our time spent together in the warmth of their home and <clears throat> the blessing of their friendship. You ladies were definitely a blessing and he, uh, he definitely appreciated it. So, and we appreciate the, the meals and your friendship over the years as well, that you've definitely been a blessing to not only them, but also many. So thank you. We noticed Rolly that um, when mom was around, there maybe was more talking and dad would call you when it was ladies time, huh? And kind of, flee but uh he um didn't do that when mom was gone and the ladies came to visit and were at his house with him and so we know he really absorbed it all and loved on it um as well and i you know as much as we had a hard time getting him to eat things later on whenever the ladies brought him food <laughs> with them when they came to craft time that food was opened and eaten right away <laughs>
Um, can you hear me? Hi, I'm another of Ellie's daughters tuning in from Maplewood, New Jersey. Hello, Yvonne, Yolanda, and Lori. My love to you all. Happy birthday, Uncle Bob, and happy wedding anniversary. 50 years, Bob and Kay. That's amazing. I wanted to share with everybody, first of all, my memories of Uncle Bob and Kay will always be their enormous, enormous smiles. So happy <laughs> always to see all of us from Long Island. It just made us feel so welcome, like my other sister said. But I'm going to turn my phone out onto my front porch, and I hope you can see this little wooden table that I believe Uncle Bob made. And I don't know how many of you are lucky enough to have something that he made, but Grandma was selling her house in Dryden, and it was going to be left in the basement. And she told me to take it. So I took it. <laughs> can you see it? <laughs> Through the screen, it's right there. It's a little four-legged. Liz, table. you gotta turn your camera the other way. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, was turn it the other way. Yeah, that's right. So now put it on the put it on the no. Where's your mom? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now I don't know how to do it. Now put it on. Turn it around so we can see the bench. Is that before me? Okay, yep. Now turn it 90 degrees one direction. <laughs> oh, that's still inside. <laughs> Someone there. Oh, there, you go. there you go. Now wait. Work? get close. Yes, you're in the right direction. Now get No, it's just dark there. on my porch, so you can't see it. But uh, I can't unplug my phone because the battery's gonna die. Can you bring the porch inside? Put the light on. I mean, bring the bench inside. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. This is kind of hilarious. <laughs> I am so jealous. I'm going to steal that bench next time I make it out of the house. <laughs> Maureen, it reminds me of like who's on first or whatever, which was kind of like what we did when you guys came to visit. Which which cousin is that? What's her name? <laughs> wait, is she the oldest? No, wait, is she? <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> help us out. You're the only boy. I know which one you are. <laughs> okay, here it is. It's in the house. Okay. Liz, I think you might have to hide that. You might be missing it from lots of family members. We might just steal who has the bench wait, now. I don't see it. Can you see it? There it is. <laughs> it's soaking wet <laughs> there it is good job liz you brought it inside so That's beautiful. Awesome. good job uncle bob <laughs> how many people here on this zoom have a bench by uncle bob <laughs> oh yes oh yvonne's got one <laughs> I have the table from grandma's living room that he made in high school, which she always had her Santa Claus boot with the round chocolates inside and the bowl of nuts. And that was one thing dad always loved too, was cracking nuts and getting <laughs> the nuts. But, and I have grandma's nut bowl and her nutcracker too. <laughs> oh, that is so awesome. I love it. Did he happen to make a coat rack? Cause I have the coat rack. Did he make that? <laughs> Oh my gosh, maybe. <laughs> I just sent Patrick, cousin Patrick, the Zoom meeting. He want I can't believe he's awake all the way over there, but he doesn't seem to be using it because I don't see him on the Zoom meeting here. Yeah, we thought we sent it to him before too. I'm not sure what time it is, but In, uh... Yolanda, you recorded though, right? Are you are recording our hilarity? So it's 12 hours difference. It's 8 a.m. for him. Um, he's in Japan. Oh. Um, so we had, we've had corners of the country because we had um, Elizabeth. Uh, her real name is Alamade. She is from Nigeria, and she was on. It was actually 1 a.m. for them, and they joined us. And Patrick is um, 12 hours difference, and he was going to try to sneak on, but he's also in the middle of the school, preschool programming too. 
All right. Know, it'll be, it, we'll see if he we'll see if he's able. I I think he may have some trouble with the connection. Okay. Can you guys see this picture? Okay. So um, for those of you who are at the burial, this is the picture I was talking about. Um, but so the story kind of that goes with this. Um, any guesses as to which grandchild that is? I can't see a picture. Yeah, we can't oh. see the picture. Regina, she's it's holding it in front of her face. Oh, I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Yolanda's. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Okay. So that's actually my oldest. So he was the first grandchild. And um, so what I had shared at the burial was I was, um, all of us, you know, mom and dad got married very late in life. So, um, you know, everybody was kind of wondering if, if they would ever get married and then, you know, would they have kids? And, and, and then all of us kind of delayed getting married. So then would they ever see their grandkids? Well, so they actually did get to see some grandkids. They had seven, um, but so Rory was the youngest. And actually when mom, uh, when he was young, mom actually had a surgery. And so uh, it was before any of the other grandkids had come along and, um, but she made it through and she actually, but the two of them were able to see one grandkid go from birth to graduation. So that's the birth kind of like age picture. And then I have one, it's in, it should be in the slideshow. And we're going to show that again at the end of my son at his graduation. So they did get to see one kid all the way through. Um, actually, both of those pictures are in the slideshow. Yolanda, do we want to do the last song now and invite everyone to light their, well, do we want to do a last call for sharing and then inv invite to light the luminary and do the last song? And then anyone who wants to stay on can stay on and anyone who um, is ready to retire can. I didn't realize it was your folks' 50th anniversary coming up uh, on uh, tomorrow. Bob loved to tell the story about how they surprised everybody. They were all at a Halloween party and everybody, and then all of a sudden your mom comes out in a wedding gown and, and all of a sudden now they're getting married. And that was always a favorite story. He used to chuckle about the, the, <laughs> they surprised everybody at their Halloween party with a wedding. And so uh, that was kind of a special thing. I also wanted to make mention that I mean, we talked about Bob uh, working around the church and all that kind of thing, but he also was very uh, active as on the governing board. He was a trustee at one point. He was a deacon at one point, and you know, and and he was very even after he be, after he was blind, he still wanted to be a part, and so he was still a deacon even after that. And he had such a generous heart, you know, because I mean, when it came time to help people, you know, he was always there. And and I have no idea. I mean, that's not uh, nothing I would ever know and all, but. I'm sure your mom and dad were very, very generous people. And, uh, you know, I have no idea, obviously, but I just uh, know I can just, you know, I could say that without any, any qualms, but, you know, they, they, they were very generous in their giving and, and not only in all kinds of ways. I know when they had their garden, they were always giving things away. And, you know, so again, that was, it was more than just physical outside kind of things. He also really wanted to serve and, and, and be a part and your mom taught Sunday school and all kinds of things. And so the, the church really benefited by their presence and it was a real blessing to uh, have them at, at the church for the years that they were there. So wanna thank them and again, as I said, I'm sure they heard those, heard those words, well done. Did you wanna sing the last song? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the last question is not coming up for me. Okay, the last song is uh, is a one very familiar, I'm sure, to a lot of us. It's uh, In the Garden. And so, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. So, In the Garden. Peace be to the 
Thank you, Skip, so much for everything. And Charm, we really appreciate you guys. And for walking with us during the long days in the hospital, too, with both mom and dad. We really appreciate it. Well, like I said, I was always a, was glad to be a part and enjoyed. And it was my privilege my, my, you know, to do that. That's so, okay. Thank you. I second. <laughs> no, thank you. Okay, so I will manually ask these questions um, for whatever reason, but the poll part is not working. I will ask you. Um, all right, so your next question is Bob met K at, and your choices are Marion's Big Top, a recital, a blind date, or Dale Carnegie course graduation. You guys want the questions or the responses again? Options. Marion's Big Top, a recital, a blind date, or a Dale Carnegie course graduation. Your last trivia question is, one of Bob's favorite memories was visiting Canada with his future in-laws, training a litter of a dozen pups, Rolling the tractor down the hill, or the New York State Fair. <laughs> okay, I'm sure you're all dying to know what the answers are, so I'm going to share those. All right, here you go. So the first one, the correct answer was Ithaca. Second one, did he attend post uh, high school Yolanda, classes? Yolanda, he was born in Ithaca, for those that didn't get the question. Okay. Bob worked at both IC and Cornell, which is true. Bob met Kay at the Dale Carnegie course graduation. And the last one, the the right answer is uh, visiting Canada with his future in-laws. There'll be no scores for this little trivia test, just for fun. Um, 
all the fun of trying new things with COVID happening, right? There is no script for these things. So we just have to make it up and do whatever we want, right? <laughs> Technical difficulties and all. Yeah. Hmm? You're doing a great job. This is really special. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I will start the slideshow and if you guys can um, grab your luminaries if you have them and you guys can go ahead and light those as you watch the, the um, slide, slideshow again if you got on early or first time if you came on a little bit later. Uh, I'll let it run through a couple times. And thank you again for joining us. And if you know of people that missed it, it was live streamed over to YouTube also which, you know, that was not the type of technical difficulty that we finally had happen. It was just my microphone. <laughs> Simple, silly thing. Um, and then also it, it was live stream, but then it will be able to re replay for those people that completely missed it. So you can let them know. And if they need the links at all, they can, you know, contact one of us. All right. Thank you again for joining us. And I will play this live show. So we'll be officially ending but of course those of us from many family reunions like to hang out and if people want to hang out and just visit that fellowship portion was not what we wanted to cut so um but the official portion will be kind of wrapping up now That was dad being the best man in a wedding, and I am so proud of him. He brought Herb to the Lord, and um, so he was a best man in many ways for that. Okay, so you have x minus 3 over x. I think they met, too, because of dad, didn't they? Right. Yes. One of those, it becomes the other. That was their 25th so wedding anniversary that we we surprise them. You're either you're either saying x minus three x to the negative third times two, which is x. There it is. And there's the graduation pick. And then that bump is me.
I was noticing in some of these pictures too, you have to guess the little girl because a lot of them, we look very similar. Thank you to everyone for putting the slideshow together. Appreciate you all. There's Patrick. Is Patrick there? You go. I see Patrick, but I don't, I see him on there, but I don't see his picture. Sometimes there's not enough bandwidth for a picture, but he did send us some messages. Nice. Can you tell me what the story of those two, are those moose horn, moose um, antlers? Those are moose rack. We have one in the garage or one of the garages at the house. That's mine. <laughs> wow. And um, I didn't know there were two. There was a caribou rack and that went out to Joe in Ohio, but I thought it was the elk, but the elk apparently flew fully covered with pool noodles from New York to Washington state to Wayne Marion, who has now placed it in like one of those great big wilderness stores or something like that. So it can be publicly enjoyed. And um, then there's various other trophies still here and around. <laughs> uh -huh. And so those those were all his hunting, all of Uncle Bob's hunting. Well, more Russell's, but Dad got to do a lot of the trips with him. Right. Okay. And so the moose rack that you have is Russell or your dad? Um, I mean, they did that together. I don't know exactly who got what when, but yeah, they went to um, Alaska, Newfoundland, Greenland. Um, on various expeditions. Uh, and the elk was from New Mexico. Roly has documentation. It's apparently a very good size elk also. Wow. I had no idea. 
no idea. <laughs> right. One of you shared that on one of the Facebook pages, right? That was one of the things that you shared, the details about that elk. That was pretty interesting to read about. Yes. Um, and there were turkey tails, rattlesnake rattles. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Hey, Lori. <laughs> hey, what you got there? This is my new friend. This is my mount or grandpa's uh, mountain goat. Have you named him yet, Lori? I have not named him yet. No. <laughs> I thought that was a new cat. Oh, no. But it probably weighs more than my cat does right now. Yeah, we're uh, waiting to, to put it on the wall, but we, we think we have a spot picked out for it besides dead deer. It's amazing. I almost feel like it should just start talking to us. It looks like a ham puppet. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so, um, Yolanda has a mountain sheep that's still at my dad's There we go. There, there we is. go. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's, wow. No, that's a deer. That's impressive. No, it's look the animal, the horns are going down. It's a mountain ram. A, a sheep. ram. A sheep. A yeah. Ram. That's oh, that's what a sheep is. A mount or mountain ram is a sheep. Wow. Male sheep. <laughs> I wish the I... one the one Lori has now is one of the biggest ones dad got on his own when we were kids <laughs> and we helped drag that one out of the woods. <laughs> that deer? That's yes. crazy. Wow, look at that little guy. Hello. Look at look at <laughs> <laughs> Now he's a spotlight. Woo! <laughs> that one was 190 and a half pounds dressed, which is you know, when That's it's heavy. I think it was 196. No, that was one with Grandpa. The pictures all say this one was one ninety and a half. That's <laughs> pretty trippy. Look, here's the. There's the one. No, that's the one there. there was it, and then you missed the other. The other Jenny one. Beth was hoping you'd have some more stories for us. Yeah. <laughs> No, I really, <clears throat> I really don't have too many stories. Um, <laughs> I have one. Um, I don't. Your dad was there, but it was at McDonald's, and I. He might have been in talking with my husband, but I was out watching. We had the youngest grandson at that point. Um, and he was playing on McDonald's. Um, oh, let me have one. <laughs> and the, and then your your mom came out and sat beside me, and we sat there and talked for quite a while. We hadn't seen each other in a long, long time. But uh, Greg was uh, playing on the playground at the McDonald's. That was something I learned from them. Always grab whoever you could whenever you were passing through. <laughs> yeah. Make every opportunity to visit you could ever imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Was Beth on? Was Beth on? I Their church was doing a trunk and treat oh. night, and she was going to see if she could get on for part of it, but they don't have good um, wireless down there or any kind of internet, yeah. so it was unlikely. I think she was going to lean on the recording. I, I did enjoy seeing Eleanor. I don't think I've seen her in 60-some years. She might not even know who I am. Ginny, tell her girls who you are. Um, my father bought the um, um, Dryden implement, the uh, Marion's Big Top, 
from oh. Russell. Awesome. Yeah. My my father was Eddie Carpenter. And your mother um, babysat for the four of us kids when she, <laughs> I think she might have been a senior in high school. That's and awesome. They took my grandmother and someone else to Florida for a week and Eleanor babysat us. Wow. That's really yeah, cool. I'm I, sorry she didn't get, she didn't get a chance to catch up with you. Oh. We'll have to figure out a way to get you two together. It was, it was during school. I remember, I'm quite sure it was during the winter because I, I can remember um, going down cellar and we did the laundry <laughs> when we had one of those wash tubs and then you had a ringer on it and you went oh from God. one tub to the next. Yep. <laughs> and, and our mom helped you do the laundry. That's great. Oh no! Well, I helped her do the laundry. You her I don't do the know. Laundry. I think I was probably ten. So she stayed with you for the week while your parents were in Florida. Yeah, and there are four well, of us kids. That's uh, so awesome. my brother would have been eleven. And I think we were all four there. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's very nice to meet you. <laughs> well, yeah. My my father. My father always called Marie Mariah. <laughs> and she would always act like she didn't like it, you know, but she just <laughs> loved it. <laughs> Ginny has email and Eleanor uses her email some too. That might be a starting place. Oh, all right. Ginny, I can give you her address. I'll send it to you. Okay, thank you. I'm sure she would love to hear from you. Yeah, they can connect that yeah. way. That'd be great. Absolutely. And I don't think I saw her too much after that. I don't remember. I wasn't that old. Yeah, she went off to, high, to college and then moved on from there. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know her. I, I heard sometimes things, you know, from our parents, but... I knew they, they lived on Long Island. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, she met um, one of her roommates in college, Terry. She introduced our parents to each other in a blind date. She was mom's roommate in Cortland and her husband now, well, not anymore. They're both up in heaven, but her right. husband was my father's friend and they introduced mom and dad to each other. And she, when she got out of Cortland, um, girls, I'm completely forgetting the name of the place she went and stayed with a family the for she's and she did her uh student teaching and uh, mm -hmm. a year of teaching i can't remember i can't remember where they lived but then she ended up down in long island after that yeah Cortland went quite a ways with her student teachers because i was um i went to Cortland also and taught school for 30 years congratulations Oh yeah, <laughs> thanks. That's all the white hair. <laughs> yeah, mine's coming. I've, I'm on 20 years. I went to Cortland as well, and I'm teacher. I teach kindergarten right now. <laughs> oh, no. Who are? You? Uh, let me see who you are, because I don't. I'm Eileen. Eileen. I'm, okay. I'm Eileen. I'm number six. <laughs> That's the number, number I go Oh, by. I thought there was only five. <laughs> no, there's seven of us. Seven. There's seven. Wow. Yeah, six girls and a boy. <laughs> Well, you girls look a lot alike. <laughs> we do. We all look a lot alike. Yeah. You can't mistake us. Just like the, the Marion girls. You can't mistake us as sisters. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys seen that great picture of your mom holding the twins, though, when she's about four? No, we just, um, was it that the one in the slideshow? That's a great picture. Um, I don't think it was that. Well, I have another one. Okay. Um, I think I've sent it before, but I'll send it again. I just w saw it again today, and I thought... It looks like so much of what I remember you guys looking like. Like there's yeah. so much resemblance between your it's mom. It's really amazing. You know? It's really yeah. amazing. And our kids too. My daughter Maggie, she is a complete ringer for me. Looks just like mom. Uh -huh. It's really funny. Um. Well, I think I have to get going to bed. Um. <laughs> 
Well, I am very impressed. And I want you to know as a teacher that your teacher would be super, super, super impressed with you that you use the words character traits and perseverance (laughs) to describe your grandfather. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night, Jeanette. (coughs) What a cutie. (laughs) She's adorable. I'm going to sign off too, girls. I'm going to sign off. Thank you, girls, so much. Good night. Good night. My love to you all. Me too. Good night. (laughs) I just just don't know how to sign off. (laughs) There's a a red leaf button in the bottom right corner. Okay. I love you all. Bye. It might be in your top corner, Liz, if you're on your phone. Oh, maybe. Touch the screen and it'll it'll light up. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Well, I'll say good night too. So bye bye, everybody. It was nice to meet you. Bye, Jenny. All right, thank you. Nice to meet you guys. We have a 100. <laughs>is that the one that's vicky and her parents right now Mine. no they watched on youtube um i just remembered it wrong, okay? i think Ginny's I, I still here i think she just turned off her camera she's on an iphone i turned off the camera but i can't get it a- <laughs> There's a red button. The button says leave, Ginny. There's Patrick still. No, I see him, but I guess maybe he just can't talk. Maybe that's along with the video. Yes, so I think his class is, is actually on Halloween. So they're on tomorrow already. And so they were doing uh, their costume thing today. So he was going to try to join and I think try to listen and stuff, but he wasn't necessarily going to be able to participate too much. So you, you, okay. Well, we can send you all our love, Patrick, across the big, <laughs> mighty oceans. Yeah, big hugs, socially distant hugs for sure. <laughs> Big. Well, I, I spoke. I heard someone yesterday say that the greatest thing that we should do is change socially distant to physically distant. So we're not socially leaving each other. We're just physically moving away. It's so fantastic. But I love you all. It was so so wonderful to speak with you and to share all of this this evening. God bless Thank all you. of you and have a wonderful wonderful evening. Love you. Thank you. Love Thank you too. You. Love you too, Eileen. Thanks for joining us. Eileen, I was going to tell you real quick, um, when, you know, with the masks and everything, when I finally was able to get into the hospital, I was, um, you know, sitting beside dad and I had, I think two or three different nurses come in and say, so was your sister from out of state able to come? (laughs) (laughs) You're like, it's me. I'm the one. (laughs) Surprise. I stopped. I thought. It's funny, isn't it, that we just look so much like each other that we're completely interchangeable. Someone asked me last summer, Maureen came over for a block party here, and we both had sunglasses on and our hair up in a ponytail, and they took a picture of the two of us, and someone was like, I just met your twin sister. I was like, no, there's 12 years okay, between cool. us, we're not really twins. <laughs> and I'm not sure if that was better on my part or her part that we were twins. <laughs> Lori and I used to work together and have the same uh, uniforms, like oh, it was an man. apron and a hat, but still <laughs> at Cornell. And they would say, oh, are you guys twins? And I finally, I just would look at them and say, well, you know, same mom, same dad, just six years apart, you know, just a few years difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Meg and I definitely look very much alike and there's six years between us, but love you all. Have a all great right. night. Love you Take too. Care. Yep. Good night. Good night. Literally.